Bath's heyday passed, and by the middle of the 1600s, its population had dropped to about 1,500 people, just a huddle of huts at the base of its abbey. Its residents were oblivious to the fact that their smelly mud was covering up the ruins of an ancient Roman spa. Then, in 1687, an English queen struggling with infertility came here and bathed. Within about 10 months, she gave birth to a son. Soon after that, Queen Anne came here to treat her gout. With all this royal interest, Bath the Spa Town was reborn. The revitalized town prospered as a resort. Most of the buildings you'll see today are from the 18th century. Local architects were inspired by the Italian architect Andrea Palladio to build a new Rome. The town boomed and the streets were built not with scrawny sidewalks, but with broad parades upon which gentlemen would stroll and women in their stylish dresses could spread their fashionable tales. This is the Royal Crescent. Dating from the 1770s, these are the first Georgian condos. Georgian is British for neoclassical. As you cruise the Crescent, imagine you're one of Bath's upper crust. What appears to be a seamless front lawn is actually an optical trick. The hidden wall, called a ha-ha fence, keeps sheep and picnicking peasants out without creating an eyesore. The Georgian House, at the prestigious address number one Royal Crescent, gives an intimate peek into the lavish lifestyles of this age. Volunteers in each room are determined to fill you in on all the fascinating details. Georgian ladies were extremely fashionable, not fashions as we would think of them today, because they, if they were very fashionable women, they would wear the French wigs, and they didn't start till this part of the head. So this hair here was shaved off. That meant your eyebrows were in the wrong place. They had to be shaved off, and then you had little mouse skin eyebrows stuck on further up the head. And the kitchen came with all the latest Georgian gizmos. So what is this mechanism? This is a turn spit powered by the dog. The dog was bred specially for the wheel. He went in for two hours, and then another dog would come in to replace him until the joint of meat was cooked. So he spins the meat. Yes. And if he stops walking, what if he just says, I'm going to go on strike? <laughs> well, first of all, prodded with sticks. And then, last resort, shovel a coal in there, hot coals, he runs. So a nice steak, you've got to thank your dog, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. A block away is another fine bit of Georgian architecture called the circus. It feels like a coliseum turned inside out. Its Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian capital decorations pay homage to its classical inspiration. Servants lived in attic rooms, just below the characteristic chimneys, one for each heated room. 